Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today, man. Yeah, man, Zach, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely, dude. What a blessing it is just getting the opportunity to really slow down, to sit down and just hear more about yourself, your story. It's been one of my greatest honors and privileges just serving in that athletic shepherding role with the Liberty University baseball team the last several years, getting to know you, getting to know several of the other guys. But, man, let me just say up front for all of our listeners, all those that are tuning in, there's always been something different about Ryan Shea. And I really feel like that comes down to this relationship that you have with Christ, this hunger, this thirst that you have for a man. And so I just wanted you to know up front that I acknowledge that, that I see that, and it has really been impactful in my life personally. And so, brother, I guess where I want to start out today is by giving you the chance to really dive into your story. When was it that this hunger and this thirst really began within you? And when was it that God did a complete 180 in your life? Yeah, man, I appreciate those kind words. Um, yeah. I know for me, uh, it took a while to really figure out what it really meant to follow Jesus. Uh, I'll say that. Um, but a little bit about my, my story. Um, I always grew up with a Christian, you know, going to church every Sunday. Uh, I was always at Sunday school, worship nights, you know, always affiliated with the church. Um, mm-hmm. And on top of that, right, like if someone asked me, you know, do you believe in God? My answer was always yes. Um, <laughs> God's good. You know, life is good. Uh, I put a verse in my Instagram bio if I even want to. Um, yeah. I was the, you know, prototypical Christian. Um, but then I, one day I just, man, I sat down and I was like, I'm missing something, you know, mm-hmm. like something is not right here. Um, there's gotta be more love, more intimacy, like more, uh, grace, right. More, mm-hmm. uh, more closeness with God. Um, and that's something that I didn't have. Um, and it, it, I think it was a root cause, um, of a distorted image of what I really thought my relationship was, uh, mm-hmm. which is having a relationship with him is walking with him every day. It's never going to come from good behavior, right? It's never going to come from trying to follow the rules, you know, and do the right things and be the right good person. Uh, yeah. You've got to know someone personally to follow them. Um, mm-hmm. If someone asked me, like, man, do you know Jesus? Like, do you know him personally as a friend? You know, uh, my answer was no. Um, and that led me diving really deep into the Bible, uh, into the scriptures about, you know, what it really means to follow Christ, uh, the difference between having a relationship with him and then more mm-hmm. so just trying to follow a religion uh, and outwardly express to other people that, hey, man, you know, I believe in God. Uh, there's a big difference there, and that definitely changed my life for the better. Uh, it's led me to where I am today. I love it, Ryan, and I think, you know, your story, in a sense, is very relatable to mine growing up in, in a home where I feel like two really God-fearing parents that led me in the way in which I should walk. I knew God, right? I felt like I loved God. I knew all the verses. I got hundreds on all my Bible tests going to Liberty Christian Academy, right? Christian high school, Christian university at Liberty University. I was going through that religion bubble in a sense. But like you said, it's one thing to talk about what it looks like to have a relationship with Christ. It's another thing to understand what that takes to actually foster and grow and step into something like that. So I know you're passionate about it, but can you help us understand really that difference that you were kind of just insinuating there between religion and relationship? Yeah, for sure. Um, When you focus on the poison of religion, uh, you forget the power of grace. And I think that's the problem when, you know, you're so caught up in rules and uh, behavior and lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you forget the main point of the cross, right? Uh, Galatians 2.21, you know, if Jesus, if we could do it on our own, then Jesus died in vain, right? Um, mm-hmm. So I think religion is our attempt to earn God's favor, you know, by following all the rules and being a good person and trying to do the right things. Um, and at the end of the day, like it's our own effort, right, to work mm-hmm. our way to the Father. Um, but relationship, you know, it's believing in Christ and Christ alone. Um, and I think the power of that is, you know, with Christ on the cross, man, like at some point you have to realize like, you know, his, his work was sufficient, right? So <laughs> you saying that um, you can work your way there or try to be a good enough person, like that's basically saying like the nails weren't enough. And right. that's something where you have to ask yourself like, man, does God want my heart? Does he want me to just know him and follow him? Or does he want me to try to be a good person? Um, mm-hmm. and I think the funny thing is, I think, you know, most people that are trying to work their way to God, right, through religion, mm-hmm. like if you were to ask them even, um, they wouldn't even be confident in their own works. You know, like mm-hmm. they're they're the same ones trying to figure out like, hey, you know, is this how it's supposed to happen? And then while they're trying to make it happen, like they're the same ones saying, man, I really don't know where I am. That's right. Um, so it's a never ending cycle. And I think that's why relationship is the key um, because, man, like God wants a relationship with you, right? Like he wants to know everybody, right? He's not sitting up in heaven just praying on your downfall, you know, sending blessings here and there, you know, if some good goes good or bad. Like he wants to know you and know your heart. And all we have to do is just know him and accept him back. 
Man, it's so good. And as you're saying, something that always brought great freedom to me and that understanding of the difference between religion and relationship. And like you said, understanding that our worth and our value and our identity is not rooted or anchored or attached to our performance whatsoever was I read a quote one time that said, like, the love, the grace, the mercy and the forgiveness of Christ is something that we could never earn but also something that we could never deserve, right? It was just this idea that although we are not worthy, God still calls us worth it. And I also read some the other day, as we talk about like proving, we talk about performance. Um, somebody said you're either, what did they say? You're either trying to prove someone wrong or you're trying to prove someone right. And when we live with that idea or that identity of always trying to prove ourselves, that can be so empty, right? It can yeah, lead to a yeah. void, man, because it's almost like we can never be enough. And so I just wrote down the thought the other day that really at the end of the day, we have nothing to prove because Christ has already proved, right, our worth and our value and our identity when he willingly substituted his life for ours through death on a cross. And that's exactly what you're saying, man. And as we start to kind of transition this idea of and kind of keep building off of this idea of what it looks like to build and foster a relationship with Christ— a uh, word comes to mind, which is that of abiding, right? Recently on our Extraordinary Women Tour, that was our theme this year, was abiding in Christ. You just wrote, right, you're an author of three books, but your most recent one is titled Abiding, Living Life Abundantly. And in this book, you explore what it truly means to understand that God doesn't need our performance. He simply desires our heart, a willing heart that is postured towards seeking him. It reminds me of a story I just wanted to read quickly before I ask you um, a question. It's found in Luke chapter 10, um, and it's about Mary and Martha. It's a well-known story. Some of our listeners and viewers may not know it quite well, but it begins in uh, verse 38. It says, now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Right? Tell her then to help me. Like, come on, dude, I'm doing all the work here, Jesus. Can you tell her to step in and help me too? In verse 41, though, it says, But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Ryan, what does it mean to you, man, um, to actually abide in Christ? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think if you look at the Greek word abide, uh, it's the word mena, which means to remain mm -hmm. or to stay with. Um, and I think, you know, when you talk about abiding, the difference between, you know, following all the rules and trying to work your way there, it's a posture of your heart of just simply gratitude. Right. It's you just sitting and being, you know, steadfast in the love of Christ and the grace of God saying, like, man, I'm so overwhelmed by what you're doing. Like, I'm going to just do my best. Right. To tag along with you. Because um, here's the thing, you know, like we talk about religion and relationship, like our efforts are never going to be enough. Right. right. Like you just said, um, you look at the biblical standard, Romans 3.23, all have fallen short. Um, and you look at the Old Testament and then repeat in the new, you know, be holy as I'm holy. Right. So mm -hmm. if you have two opposite ends of the spectrum, be holy as I'm holy, and then all have fallen short, like, man, we're in trouble. You know, right. like we're in trouble. Um, but that's the good news of the gospel, like you said, is that Christ is enough and will always be enough, you know, when we never are. Um, mm -hmm. And my, my, the main quote here, I think, is, you know, you never fully appreciate the need of a Savior until you recognize you're in need of saving. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that gratitude piece of, man, like, I know, like, I am so far gone, right? And, like, without him, like, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way, the only way to the Father, the only way I could have right relationship with with God is through Christ. And then I have the opportunity to know Christ, not by trying to earn it and not by trying to be good enough for it, but just simply by seeking Him, right? Mm -hmm. That's just, that's unreal, right? It doesn't make sense. Um, I think that's the power of grace, and that's what abiding looks like. That's right, man. And we are who we are because of who's, or really because of who He is and whose we are at the end of the day. And when we abide in Christ, when we build and we grow that development of an identity that's rooted and anchored in Him and all that He's already done and all that He will continue to do, that is so freeing and that is such a warm and welcoming place to sit at the end of the day in His warm embrace. Yeah. Yeah. And so, man, I love that idea uh, of abiding. And as you talk about, and you've really just done a great job of kind of helping all of our listeners and viewers understand that we don't really have much to offer at the end of the day. We don't bring much to the table besides that willing heart, right? It's the free yeah. gift 
that we just have to accept and receive. I feel like a lot of people, though, Ryan, we know that, but we have such a hard time like actually receiving that, whether that's the guilt, whether that's the shame, right, the lies that we listen to. How does somebody get to a point maybe internally where they actually say, you know what, like I have, even though I'm not worthy, right, I can still view myself as worth it to where I can actually receive that gift today and get rid of the lies or the opinions or the view of myself that may have distorted that reception since. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that lies um, within trusting the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think, you know, we wake up every day, right. And, you know, maybe the day before we sinned, right. And then the next day we're, you know, trying to go about our business, you know, open up our Bible, do our thing. And, you know, that's like you said, that sense of shame hits us where it's like, man, you really don't, deserve to do this right Right. you aren't worthy right um and i think the beauty in that is you have to step out of yourself like you said you know whose you are and believe in christ's words about you Mm. not what you think about you right like it's not what you think the matter is like the final say and say is like christ says you're enough and you know you just want you to come as you are right Mm. right just living is something you just do in your own power right it's something Mm. you just it's a byproduct of walking with him right so the more you walk with him the more you know him the more he does the work in you and a giving giving your heart to him will result in him changing your heart you know so it's a step by step process um and it's believing his words uh, his true words about you and your identity it's good man it's really good and as we keep talking about this idea of it's it has nothing to do with our performance there's something that you mention a lot in your book which is still understanding the importance of utilizing and practicing what we call spiritual disciplines right can you help our listeners understand like why are those still so important to implement within our lives but at the end of the day they're not the deciding factor that gets us to heaven yeah yeah for sure intimacy with christ is something you work for right it's yeah. it's it's something you don't it's not something you work for it's something you seek after hmm. um so when you talk about you know spiritual disciplines and like trying to know the heart of god right it's you're you're trying to build a relationship with him not trying to qualify for a religion right mm-hmm. and i think that's the difference that we we think is like man like we're trying to do all these things and trying to like you know check off all these boxes but at the end of the day, like they're not going to just add blessings of your life, right? And they're not going to like add God's love to you, like when you when you meet Him in the kingdom, right? Like it's just simply in this this moment of your life, you know, growing to know the heart of God, so you can live out God's purpose in your life. Um, mm-hmm. Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen, right? It says, "If you search for me with all your heart, you will find me. Not if you behave well and follow the rules, will you find me?" You know, um, and I think the difference there is, you know, trying to obey based upon um, preconceived knowledge of uh, you know, following all the rules, like it's never going to end well. Um, John fourteen fifteen says, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a posture of your heart and a reaction based on what you've received, right? Mm-hmm. If I received free grace, like free, never ending grace that I do not deserve, right? A death that was sent for me, then in return, like God, you have my whole heart, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have my entire life. That's my only reaction to what I've received. And that's what spiritual disciplines do. It's, you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. to grow and to have a relationship with him, not just, you know, follow the rules and know knowledge about God. Mm. That's right, man. It's not just about following the rules, right? This isn't just a rule book at all. This, at the end of the day, is in a sense a guidebook of how to live that abundant life that John 10.10 talks about, right? The one that the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but that Jesus has already come, and he's already paid the price so that we may live life more abundantly, like you said, with the grace that we receive from Christ, but understanding that I, I love that quote. What did you say? It's about building a relationship with Christ rather than qualifying for a religion. That's yeah. that's good, man, because you talk about like community. You talk about church. You talk about prayer. You talk about spending time in this word. That's building a relationship. It's just like investing in any other relationship in our life. It takes time. It takes work. It takes effort, although that isn't what qualifies us, right? Only Jesus does that, the belief in him, the forgiveness of our sins, yeah. but that helps build and strengthen that relationship and there's that old quote you are who you spend time with the more time you spend with christ the more you begin to in a sense infuse like what christ like qualities look like in your life you begin to bear those fruit and that's the difference right that's how you can tell that someone is actually abiding in him by the fruit that they bear is that would you agree with that yeah no that's good man that's good i think you know walking by the spirit you know you talk about walking by the spirit and it's it's a byproduct like yeah. you said, like at some point you're going to think like, man, he's just going to wear off on me. You know, right. <laughs> like right. That, whenever you want it or not, like if you're walking with him at some point, he's just going to start wearing off on you. And you're going to mm-hmm. look up at your life and say, man, like this is exactly what I've wanted all along. 
because at the end of the day, you know, my seeking and by faith, my wanting to know him and build my relationship with him, like he's just poured it all out on me. Mm. Um, and that's the difference, right? Because religion, it's like, man, like I, I need to achieve this and achieve that before I get there. And Christ has just come and I'll do it for you along mm. the way. Mm. You know how like when you're working out, you're, you are a workout guy, right? I ain't <laughs> yeah. calling you a meathead, but my man's doing a <laughs> squat program right now, right? After you come out of the gym, like you smell, you have a certain smell about you because you're yeah. wearing the clothing, you smell a certain way, and people are like, bro, did you just work out, right? It's evident. Yeah. That should be yeah. our prayer is that the more time we spend with God that we would like reek of his aroma to where oh, yeah. it's like, man, it's evident that – Ryan Shea is spending time with God, that he is attuned to the spirit in his life because there's just something different about him, right? It should be evident for everybody to see and to hear. Bro, as we keep talking about this idea of right living and how it actually ties into the process of grace and what really saves us, there may be a lot of people out there, man, who, whether they're they're new believers. Maybe they haven't come to know Christ quite yet, and they're just watching this. They're very interested. They're entertaining the idea. But then it's like, bro, what happens, Ryan, when I actually have engaged in and I crave and I actually like the things in my life that I come to find out that God hates or actually break his heart? Like, how do I begin to strip away the old patterns? How do I begin to stop seeking or desiring those types of things when it's something that I crave, man? What does that whole process look like for somebody? What's the encouragement you would give them? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And I think honestly, like, that's the basis of walking as walking by faith, right? Yeah, and being a right. Christian is, you know, how can I day to day surrender my desires mm. um, and honor God at the same time? Um, and I think like the lie that we hear a lot in the church uh, and just in Christian culture is like, hey, you know, once you become a Christian, like your goal is to be like Jesus, right? Mm. Like, what would Jesus do? Like, yeah. you know, how are you becoming like all these questions? And like, the aim is not to be like Jesus to attain perfection, right? Because we're never going to do it. Uh, the aim is to walk with Jesus and experience transformation. And I think that's the problem where we, we think that, you know, like I said, in our own power, right, in our own efforts before him, like we're going to just magically end up there one day. Mm. Um, and instead of just trusting, you know, him to do the work in us, like we fall short of even a bit of sanctification, right, because mm. we're too worried about doing it ourselves. Uh, we try way too hard in our own power to perform instead of just trusting his spirit inside of us to transform. Mm. And I think that's the issue is like, man, like you can't do it on your own, right? Like we talked about earlier, you know, all falling short, like we're, we're in trouble by ourselves. Um, and I think uh, along with that goes the route of sanctification where, hey, if you want to become more like Christ, like you need to go straight to the source, you mm. know, like he'll, he'll provide the strength for you to become more like him. It's not behavior modification, it's spiritual transformation, yeah. right? It's God doing a work from you in the inside out, um, not you trying to, you know, from the outside in, pour it all out on him. Um, and then, you know, we talk about sin in your life, you know, because, like, at, at the end of the day, like, we're going to sin, right? We're sinners um, saved by the grace of Christ, obviously, um, but we're all going to fall short still. And I think the question, like, we have to ask ourselves um, is, like, is what we're doing, like, this choice right now, right, to disobey in this moment, like, why would I ever sacrifice that and compromise what I have with Christ right now, mm -hmm. right? Like, you talk about, you know, taking faithful steps, right, for X amount of days, you know, you wake up, you're like, man, like, I'm starting to seek the Lord, right? Like, I'm starting to really understand what it means to follow Him um, and just want to know His heart. And you know what? Like, I'm actually, like, it's it's successful, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm walking by the Spirit daily. Yes. Yes. Um, and you get to a point where it's like, oh, man, like, I really want to do something, right, that's, that's really contradictory to what God wants for me. Um, and then in that moment, you ask yourself, it, is it, am I willing to compromise and sacrifice what I have right now, right? What I've built all this time on the altar of one sin, one moment, one experience, right? And that's not saying like, you know, all these past, um, you know, times have been built, uh, like, you know, trying to build a resume for yourself. It's just, man, like I've been close to God, you know, and it's really worth sacrificing that. Um, and that, I think going back to religion and relationship, you know, like religion says, try harder, right? Like try, 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 and like yeah. do it on your own. And like, you can do it. Like, you know, just don't do this because you say you're a Christian, so you really shouldn't do that. But relationship, it just says trust more, right? Like in, in those moments of weakness, in those moments of wanting to do something where you know you shouldn't, mm -hmm. it says, man, like just trust me, right? Like I, I got you and just trust me on in this decision right now. Like it's it's not for, it's not going to benefit you. 
right? Mm-hmm. Like you need to get to a point where Christ over all things, like Christ is better than temptation. Knowing Christ is better than, you know, those desires that are against him. Um, and he's your crown jewel, right? He's your greatest desire of all things. Mm. Two of my best friends, uh, their names are Josh and Tyler. I've spoken a lot about them throughout the podcast over the last several years. They kind of introduced me to a guy named Jamie Winship and a lot of his stuff. He talks about like identity formation being anchored and rooted in the spirit. And he said, like you said, it's not just about becoming more like Christ, right? A lot of times when we're experiencing um, tough decisions, different things like that, temptation, we ask that that question, what would Jesus do, right? We're not Jesus at the end of the day. Like we we just aren't. And so we don't have something. Sometimes our flesh is so weak, but rather he says we should ask the question, what does God want me to know? Or what does he want me to learn about yeah. myself maybe in this moment? That's right? And that's like what you're talking about, submitting or surrendering ourselves to the spirit and his leading and his guidance on a moment by moment basis. That's what it means to die to self, right? Yeah. It's not just yeah. a day by day, a morning by morning where I try to purposefully and intentionally fall out of the bed and onto my knees, right? It's like there are going to be moments throughout the day that are going to require that submission to the Holy Spirit to say, God, I can't just become better at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Like I can't do those things on my own strength, but God, I need you to invade me with those qualities that you already possess for me. Let those live and breathe and dwell inside of me and let those be spilling out of me so that way I don't fall into the temptation that is luring me, right? Because right now, man, I would if apart from you, like naturally, right? So it's like you said, it's seeking God. It's seeking what does he want us to know in the midst of those moments. And it's choosing to surrender to his leading and to his guidance every step of the way. That's how he begins to, in a sense, shift the discipline of our heart to reshape the desire's of our heart. Yeah. And that's a big yeah. piece that a lot of people need to understand. We can't do it in our own strength. It's only by the strength, the grace, and the forgiveness, really, of Christ that we're able to step into that freedom that you're talking about today. So, bro, to listeners out there that, like I said, they maybe are a new believer, maybe they're a non believer, but they're listening and they're entertaining this idea. The question I have for you, man, as we keep talking about this heart transformation, like, what is the end goal in all of this, right? Some people may be like, what's the ultimate prize as we continually, like, grow and we build and we try to abide in Christ and foster this relationship with him? What's at the end of this tunnel? Yeah, um, I'd say, you know, if you look at your life and you don't like the harvest you're getting, you know, maybe it's time to start changing the seeds you're sowing, right? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're getting, if you're reaping something that you don't want and you look at your life and you're like, man, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Right. And like, I feel farther than God than I ever have. You know, I don't know where to go back to. It's like, dude, like start planting some new seeds in the ground. Right. Um, And the fact of the matter is like, they're not going to just happen in a day. Right. Like harvest don't happen in a day, but you take one faithful step at a time. Right. Like one faithful day reading your Bible, one faithful day going to church, you right, life groups, small groups, you know, worship music. And then you look up one day and you're like, man, I've been walking faithfully for X amount of time. And this is where I wanted to be all along. Mm-hmm. Um, Matthew 11, you know, it says, come to me, all you are weary in need of rest. Uh, my yoke is easy, burden is light. Yeah. Uh, a yoke is a, it's like a wooden farm piece um, that they put around like cows, right, in the field. So when they're walking, like they're literally, they can't go away from each other, right? They walk simultaneously to do everything mm-hmm. together. Um, and I think that's the image here. Like we talked about earlier, if you are yoked, like literally yoked to Jesus, like he's going to wear off on you, right? right? And you can't get away from him. Um, and I think, you know, getting there to that point of being yoked is the ultimate prize. You talk about being the ultimate prize, like the ultimate prize is him, mm-hmm. right? Like not things that he can bring, not things he can do for your life, not, you know, adding, you know, favor or blessings. Like the ultimate prize out of the entire existence is is Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Like Christ and Christ alone. Like he is the he's the crown jewel, greatest desire, you know, all in all, Lord of Lords. Like he is all of you, right? And I think if he becomes your greatest prize, like your utmost desire, then everything else, you know, everything else will take care of itself, right? Because <laughs> the more you seek him and the more you just like, man, like I'm so overwhelmed by you, um, it changes your life, right? And it re- it reassures your purpose, it realigns what you're doing, um, and it puts all of your focus on him and his glory. Christ is the ultimate prize, right? Because he's the one that renews our hearts. He reshapes our perspectives. He renews our minds. And that way, whenever we're faced against challenge, difficulty, adversity, pain, 
trial, whatever that looks like in life, right? We can know that although God never promised the absence of those things, he promised his presence in the midst of those things. And so then we have a different perspective of knowing that even when we're going through those trials and tribulations, that God didn't just allow those things to happen, but he's actually in our midst experiencing them with us. And he goes where he is invited. So we don't have to turn to other things, worldly things, to try to satisfy the deepest longings and desires of our soul, right? Those aren't the rescue. He yeah. is ultimately the one that rescues us from the pits, right? He is the one that reshapes those perspectives. He is the one that gives us that peace and that comfort and the hope because hope is a person. Christ is the ultimate prize. That's a great word, Ryan. And, man, dude, I could I could sit here, bro, and talk to you for hours about this type of stuff. But what I want to kind of – how I always conclude um, just a lot of our episodes is just by allowing the guest um, the chance. You have the mic right in front of you, my friend, just to share a pressing word that God has placed on your heart for such a time as this, man. So to the person out there today – Maybe who's struggling with this idea of fully understanding or comprehending what it means like to build a relationship with Christ, what it means to walk and to bear the fruit, right, to actually allow Christ to reek of his aroma, all of these things. What is that last word of hope, encouragement, and motivation that you want to instill within all of us today? Yeah, um, I think I think at any point in our lives, like, we have to ask ourselves what matters most to us, hmm. right? You talk about... Um, your life here on earth, it's talking about your life into eternity, like what matters most to you, right? And that can be, you know, fame, popularity, money, material success, or I mean, it could be good things like, man, I just want to have peace, right? I want to have joy, like I want to be, you know, sustained, right? And kind of live comfortably. And that's all great. Um, But I think at the end of the day, like, if Christ is your crown joy, then what matters most to you is him, Right. Mm-hmm. Psalm 27, 4, David says, the one thing that I seek, right, is to dwell in the house of the Lord. And if if you really like cherish Christ over all other things, like that's going to change the way you live. Right. Because you weren't put on earth to be remembered. You weren't put on earth to, you know, accumulate fame and success. But you were put here to prepare for eternal life. Right. Mm-hmm. And if we talk about this living life abundantly concept, it's like, man, you can start living eternal life right now. Right. If you by abiding with him, by seeking him, by knowing him, you can live the eternal life that he's prepared for you and put before you right now. And then on the flip side, that eternal life can pour into other people's and add into their lives, too. Right. Mm -hmm. To add to the kingdom. Um, And it all centers back to the main point of like, man, how how bad do you want to know the heart of God and how can you embody it during your time here on earth? Because that's all that matters. Right. And the good news is, like we said, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. It's right there for the taking. And you can make kingdom impacts right? By one decision to seek the Lord and one decision to say, man, you are all I have, right? Peter said, you're all I have. Where else will we go, right? Where else would I go? You're all I have. That's what I'm focused on, eternal life. Mm. I love it, man. You can make that same decision, which is life-changing today, and it will truly shape the trajectory of your life every step of the way, moving forward. Ryan Shea, brother, again, um, for all those listeners that want to be able just to find the resource, all three of your books, but specifically the most recent one that we talked about, Abiding, Living Life Abundantly, where can they find that resource? And also, where can they just find out more about you? Yeah, uh, all the books are on Amazon. Uh, Abiding's on uh, Barnes & Noble as well. Uh, you can get on your phone, actually, on Apple Books, um, ebook. Um, but if you can follow me on, on Instagram, Twitter, Rai Shea, uh, you search my name, I'm sure you can find me. <laughs> but I'm Absolutely. Sure to, I'd be love to connect with all you guys. And I challenge all of our listeners, go get the book. I'm telling you guys, it is so impactful. It's encouraging. It will encourage your heart. It will motivate you and push you closer to the heart of God. So I'm telling you guys, what a valuable resource. Ryan, man, I appreciate you, bro, uh, your time and just your willingness to jump on the podcast with us today. I love you. I love your heart. I'm so thankful that God has, again, crossed our paths. And I just look forward to watching you continually grow and flourish as you step into this role of ministry, pastoral leadership, church planning, right? That's your major at Liberty. It's going to be incredible to see the things that God is going to continue to do in and through your life, bro. Thanks, Zach. Love you, brother. Love you, bro.